in the raw. RK is guy in the free media. <clears throat> your friend, your brother, me, Haji, Dr. Roshan Khan, in the raw. In the last few days, and uh, today is uh, Sunday, June 30th, in the last few days, uh, lots of things have been happening in Guyana. And a few weeks ago, it started with the Congress of the People's Progressive Party, Civic. And um, there recently we had uh, the AFC con Congress and the PNCR Congress. So lots of things have been happening. And I wish to um, give you some facts and some points on what's happening in in that now to about the AFC I understand that Nigel Hughes has been elected as the new leader of the AFC Nigel Hughes um, here is the Guyana um, Times there he is smiling away with a thumbs up Personally, I have nothing against the man. We have always shared quite a, a, a respectable uh, relationship. Hello, hi, how we go, and so on. He's a professional, uh, um, a quite an elegant man, and, um, and a court warrior. He knows how to win cases. He knows how to find areas and uh, create loopholes in order to win cases and get... Uh, criminals off, even though they deserve to go to jail and to um, pay heavy compensation and so on. The man has a skill in law. And this is where I have a problem basically with, with law. But I'm not talking here about law, because in law, it is a big game. Innocent people go to jail in cases. Criminals escape punishment. People who need to pay compensation for a variety of things escape Law because it appeared that law is a game. Anyhow, this is not what I'm here. The man is good in that. And it's not only him, it's most lawyers who would be um, doing the same kind of thing. So, the article says, <clears throat> Nigel Hughes elected new leader of the Alliance for Change. However, I notice I've been seeing a lot of uh, social media commentaries and otherwise. Uh, it is Amazing that he only got two nominations and he was able to win. Um, and uh, the other guy who liked to go on television and, and uh, spread a lot of innuendos at times on um, Facebook and social media, in many cases with lies and emotionality, he got 15 nominations and he got zero. It is amazing that uh, for founder, I would say, a founder, member, maybe the original thinker of the idea, Kemraj Ramjatan, he acquired nothing. He was not nominated, it seems. Uh, I haven't seen any kind of a nomination for him, and he uh, has not gotten any kind of an appointment within the, the party, so to say. So I'll ask you for a moment, please. Remember, I'm doing the recording, and this is in the raw, so some things can happen. Well, my chair seems to be sinking. It's getting old now. It's been here for over decades. So it's dropping. Maybe my weight. And then when you want buy chairs, you have to buy chairs considering your weight. Otherwise, sometimes you don't know. You buy a beautiful chair, and uh, then eventually you, you, you suffer. That's okay. So, what has happened to Ram Chetan? You don't hear from him, you don't see anything, he has gotten very quiet. Um, he has lost his base, which was mostly the indo guyanese in the upper quarantine area, whom it is uh, said by the people that they felt betrayed by Ram Chetan and Moses Nagamutu for closure of the sugar estates and... Uh, creating life difficult, creating nothing to help them to develop their lives and to prosper, even giving them a piece of land. Unfortunately, Desmond, um, I beg your pardon, God bless my uh, 
one of the leaders that I truly respected and loved in this country, Hugh Desmond Hoyt, um, but his mouth, his name came to my mouth, um, and obviously into my brains. So, the, the President Granger government and the cabinet made a sudden decision to close sugar estates and change lives and didn't do anything but except for when it was nearing election, President Granger said we will give lands to all the sugar workers. Um, two zero, not too little, two zero ish, too late. Mr. Granger, President, former President Granger, Brigadier, Chief of Staff, former Granger, and uh, the PNC leadership and cabinet. So, and in the AFC, uh, comprising the APNU. So, as a result of that, Nagamutu, Mr. Nagamutu, I'll still give him his, his Mr. and Mr. Ramjitan, they lost favor with the people and for many other things. Um, they did not prepare for the people and then made ludicrous statements in Parliament describing the sugar workers and accusing the PPP because, and so on. Be simply because they said, oh, because your supporters come from that area, you are fighting for benefits for them. They had not, the people had to go to court. Imagine this, why the AFC is in the doldrums or the stormy waters, the hurricane area. They didn't create anything to give the people a land or to create a system to, to, to self-survive, to be self-employed. And um, the people suffered. People committed suicide. People fell into the depression. Some people, younger people, wives went, uh, uh, it is alleged, did wrong things in order to keep the family surviving while the men fell into depression and many of them turned into, into alcohol because they were, it was a sudden thing. Now, if the AFC, uh, where Ramjatan base came from, and he was attacking the PPPC in Parliament, and where his base came from, from the quarantine and upper quarantine, he, he lost out. Then, in recent times, when the PPPC was creating and repairing and redoing the Blairmont and, 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 and Port, 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 Port Moran factory, he was trying to represent the workers, ludicrously, if I would tell you. So this is where Ramjatan, and in many cases, uh, Moses Nagamutu got wiped off the political planet and Ram Chetan is being wiped off the political planet and the people did not even nominate him. Now, I'm not um, in any way attacking him at the moment, but at a time when I was very critical to, of him because he did wrong things and uh, political opportunism uh, caused him to actually destroy the AFC by fighting for the pri prime ministerial position and contesting with Nagamutu, who was more popular with the PNC and the and the um, the president at that time, Granger, uh, and so on, and so he, he broke it up. And then Nagamutu technically went into calm political scenario and for a while disappeared from the face of the earth uh, for a while, probably recuperating and so on. And we see his face a few times and hope he's well. He was one of my heroes as a young man growing up. I used to run to hear him speak at truck line in quarantine and he would travel as a boy, teenager, and going to Port Morant and Blackbush Polder to listen to Ramjatan. No, sorry, not Ramjatan. Oh my God, no. Um, I'm talking about Moses Nagamoto. I still have respect for him. He made his mistakes. He, it, I made to understand he made some uh, some kind of an apology and regretted um, what he might have done. Um, and they could have stayed home and built themselves. They could have stayed home. But they did what they did and uh, what came out of it? What have they achieved? They broke the government. They destroyed Hydro by voting with the PNC. Then they were uh, 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 an independent party and that is where they the relationship, the incestuous relationship was coming out. Um, the adulterous relationship was coming out. And they destroy Hydro. We would have had Hydro, ladies and gentlemen, if it wasn't for the AFC. Never forget that. If it was not for the AFC, now Mr. Hughes was not a part there at that time um, in this, this uh, 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 position, but his, he, the person who nominated him and supported him 
in this election was quite active in the AFC and they voted against Hydro and they, they defunded the Hydro. And then when they came together, they closed down the sugar industry. The people will not forget. I do not see how that community of Ramjatan and Nagamutu would support Nigel Hughes. Now, one thing I will tell you from my experience, ladies and gentlemen, the indo guyanese people who come from that, that area, uh, Region 6 and so on, um, Upper Quarantine, those people, uh, indo guyanese people, actually um, look up to and respect good-looking afro -Gainese. Um, no, there is no, um, there is no uh, scientific evidence of this, so don't ask me for that. But I'm talking from experience. They like intellectual, good-looking, um, leaders, afro -Gainese. And this is why the former general secretary who recently passed, um, great outstanding personality in the quarantine. He was highly loved by indo guyanese people. Uh, he was good-looking, uh, he was charming, uh, and so on. Uh, Nigel Hughes have a similar kind of personality. He's a man, he's a good-looking man. Look at him smiling here. You know, he has a, a handsome personality and style. Now, there's an article, there's this here, and I see um, this young man wrote an article on him. Uh, Joel Magwandin, uh, Nigel Hughes, and Conflict of Interest. So I can't do it all in one because I already gave you quite a few minutes of uh, my take. Um, it is my view, before I read, that the AFC, my advice, should not link again. We already saw how Norton humiliated Kamaraj Ramjitan when they said they were going to split because he technically he warned him publicly if he votes or does things against the PNC or they could, he could actually be kicked out of parliament. I know Norton can, will not possibly encourage I, I, I will not be surprised he will not encourage this alliance because he cannot move push around or, or pussyfoot with Nigel Hughes. Nigel Hughes Attorney at law, who I think should be a senior counsel, I personally believe so, and this is where I have a problem with politics. Regardless of people's political affiliations and so on, if they are entitled to a, a position, a title, a benefit, they should get it. I, as a, as a Democrat, who believes in democracy, I believe people who are not supporting the government but are, are professional in their endeavor as a professional, as we had Vincent Alexander at the University of Guyana, he was quite a professional man in his work. But when he comes to draw the line now when he goes into politics, you were seeing another personality. So with Nigel Hughes, he's a professional. Uh, people will like him and he could be um, take a, a high percentage, it's possible, he could take a high percentage of the PNC electorate, their supporters. I see that the AFC could become the main opposition if it runs by itself and do not become a lackey of uh, Aubrey Norton, leader of the People's National Congress, reform, and leader in the PNCR opposition parliament and the APNO group in parliament. So that's my take. I think if they run, they could overtake and become the main opposition. And uh, I think and uh, the PNCR could become a smaller party. Now, let me read. Nigel Hughes, elected new leader of VFC, admits Exxon is a client while dodging questions on renegotiating the oil contracts. Well, we know the AFC is always fighting for a negotiation of the oil contract when the AFC member of parliament and attorney at law went to negotiate and sign the contract with ExxonMobil 
And when the PPPC government took power, they want to renegotiate with the PNCR, who gave instruction and, and so on. And then um, the, the PNCR parliamentarian who went and signed and was minister at that time of natural resources, I think, if I'm right, to sign on behalf of the government of Guyana with instructions, he indicated he was given instructions, ladies and gentlemen, friends and family, to sign. And then suddenly, they want the PPC government to go and renegotiate the entire contract. Where were they? Were they bereft of wisdom and intelligence and sense? So, this is something that Mr. Ra Mr. Nigel Hughes will have to face as they plot along, as they move along, and whether they're asking whether he is, does Joel Bagman then, is asking whether they will renegotiate the contracts and whether he, Nigel Hughes, will give up his huge multi-million, maybe billion dollar contracts with Exxon. And I go read it. I told you it law, and I think it should have been senior. I personally think it should be senior. The man knows law. The man has served the country in the capacity of law. But because he is an opposite, a political opposition operative, he has been denied that appointment, as we saw others who were denied under the Bornemite PNC era, and under um, the Granger government era. I think this man, Mr. President, Dr. Irfan Ali, VP Jagdale, Attorney General, this man needs to be titled Senior Counsel. Well, you might wait until after the elections. Attorney at Law, Nigel Hughes, has been elected as the new leader of the Alliance for Change, and while he has hinted at the possibility of him running as a potential presidential candidate has dodged questions about his position on renegotiating the controversial 2016 oil contract. In fact, he went on to admit that the United States oil giant Exxon Mobil, while with several other oil companies operating in Guyana, is a client of his. Hence, he could not commit on this issue. So whether he will run as a president, he can't. I don't know if he could continue and then if he wants to run as an indep uh, independent, as a presidential candidate. And I think he should. But then the Exxon Mobil uh, is a weight, the load he's carrying on his back, the contracts that he's enjoying. We have to see. On Saturday, the AFC held its eighth national conference, the highest decision making forum of the party, during which Hughes defeated a few party members, Sherrod Duncan, to emerge as the new, where he defeated fellow party member, Sherrod Duncan, to emerge as the new EFC leader. Um, he got that, uh, Nigel Hughes, as I said earlier, two nominations. And um, Mr. Uh, Sherrod Duncan got 15. And then he came out with a very low um, support in the actual elections. In a social media post immediately after the the results were announced, and Sad Huge said to the ancestors, sisters, brothers, friends, fellow citizens, and even free enemies, friend enemies, not friends who might be political enemies, but they are friends, friend enemies. I am highly humbled by the tremendous support an all awesome responsibility you have placed on my shoulders. According to, the Hugh, to Mr. Hughes, who has been campaigning with the slogan, slogan, Better Must Come, BMC. The party has one agenda now, and that is Guyana. Hughes had previously served as chairman of the EFC, but resigned back in 2016 over internal difficulties on the point of principle. So just like the PNC, 
huge principal issues like the Arlick families, the PNC and the EFC, he resigned out of personal point of principle, internal difficulty difficulties on a point of principle. Initially Hughes along with Duncan and, and David Patterson were all nominated for the AFC leadership post. But an agreement saw Patterson renouncing his uh, nomination in favor of Hughes who won with some 149 votes against Duncan's 62. So Duncan is very hurt and embarrassed you could see from his post, from his um, face, on image, on social media. Patterson, on the other hand, was also successful in his bid for the AFC chairmanship, which he won with 150 votes after defeating fellow parliamentarian uh, Jurita Fernandes, who gained 69. The AFC also elected in the person of Michael Carrington, while the party co-founder Raphael Chotratman had been missing from public view for some time now, has returned as the party's general secretary. The party also elected 12 members to its national executive committee to manage the AFC. Well, we know um, after so much flack was coming down, coming down on um, Raphael Trotman, he, he, he had to disappear. Um, because the pressure was too much. And out of the blues he appeared offering the PPPC government to go to uh, negotiate for the government with uh, ExxonMobil. I mean, why did they didn't negotiate with them properly at first? Um, I, <laughs> you know, his mother and I were great friends, but why he didn't negotiate properly then? Why he was begging technically, asking, demanding, to renegotiating, to renegotiate the contract with the AFC, with the ExxonMobil. I continue. Notably, immediate past AFC leader and co-founder Kemraj Ramjitan was not nominated for any of these positions. Can you imagine that? What a disgrace! What a shame! What a pain! Uh, all his people turned against him. The Bobishan turns against him. Is this the end of his political career? or they will take him and give him a position somewhere, like a nomination somewhere, something if and when they join with the PNC. Hopefully they don't and they save their soul and they try to take over the, the, the entire powerhouse that the PNC is. And maybe something Ramjitan could get along the line. Um, never definitely uh, anything to, to do with the uh, Ministry of Home Affairs as there was so much said about what happened at the Ministry of Home Affairs, especially in relation to firearms and guns and some strange um, excuses were made about COVID and all kinds of um, strange um, statements. So it seems as for, for Kemraj Ramjatan, he got nothing, was not nominated, and it's a kind of um, a shameful and a disgraceful thing to my opinion and to most people to whom I communicate. Exxon is a client. However, Hughes' election to the helm of the AFC has already raised some eyebrows given his recent admission to having links to Exxon Mobile. Prior, so what would happen now if he becomes um, President of the Republic? And well, he will not practice law, but Hughes feels and Stobie will still operate and they become consultants to their chambers and to their houses of law. Prior to Saturday's election, however, Hughes appeared on a talk show program hosted by Opposition Working People's Alliance member, uh, WPE executive member David Hines. The host had asked Hughes about his position on renegotiating the controversial 2016 Production Sharing Agreement, PSA, that was signed by AFC co-founder Trot Mun, that was signed by AFC founder Trot Mun, I repeat for emphasis, that was signed by AFC founder Trot Mun, who wanted uh, to come back and renegotiate for the PPP government. I mean, something is truly wrong there, but let me go back to the article. The Natural Resources Minister under the then Partner for National Unity, 
Alliance for Change up the AFC coalition government. There have been mounted criticism over the oil contract that saw Guyana being shortchanged and sweeping benefits going to the U.S. oil major and its partner. This has led to a push by some quarters for the lopsided PSA to be renegotiated. I believe that it's supposed to be renegotiated. The PNC um, uh, uh, vice president said they, it, it would have been renegotiated. The president said it would have been negotiated, renegotiated, and they should renegotiate as other countries did, and they're supposed to. And this is, um, I agree that the, the government of Guyana need to renegotiate, but not uh, by hiring Trotman to go renegotiate for this powerhouse of a government, the PPPC government. They have the skill, the power to re renegotiate for themselves. I go again. However, he said, during the program that he could not comment on this matter since Exxon was a client at his law firm, he was Fields and Stobie, so there is where the trouble will come in. What will happen if he becomes president? Hughes, Fields and Stobie will not close down. Exxon is a client of our firm. I'm making it public now so that nobody can't say that I have never made it known. Several of the oil companies are clients of our firm. I am I can't comment on this, he had stated last week. Well, that is good, being honest. Um, and then he, had, he actually had to be honest, simply because it's a fact that is known out there. Let me return. It was previously reported that Hughes Law Firm had represented Exxon Mobil during its negotiations with the then Guyana government on the oil contract. Those negotiations which started in early 2016 were led by Trotman, who was also the AFC leader. There were claims of conflict of interest between Trotman and Hughes, who was the AFC chairman at the time, although he subsequently resigned in April 2016. And I think why people are asking, it is out of total shame, politically, as it is alleged and said by most people. While he dodged Questions about renegotiating the oil contract, Hughes nevertheless outlined his plans for the local oil and gas sector. I will set up committees, and if we get into government, commissions that are specifically dedicated to dealing with oil generally. I will insist that they hire the best professional advice internationally, both in terms of law, in terms of economics, and in terms of the the business of oil, because the business of oil is the most sophisticated business on the planet, because it runs the planet. He posited, very well spoken. And it was um, our president who said, dealing with the oil giant, ExxonMobil, is like dealing with a, with a powerhouse company, like a no, uh, 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 a first world country, a country with power. Words to that, that effect, so to say, um, a, a nuclear powered com co company works to that effect. I recall, um, maybe not the exact words, but the president saying it is like dealing with one of those big powered nations. During the program that was live streamed last Thursday, Hughes was also asked whether he was open to a uh, presidential candidacy if he was successful in his leadership bid at the helm of the AFC. In response, he said, I'm open to doing whatever the people of Guyana think in their best interest to advance this country. The controversial 2016 oil contract for the Starbrook block signed between the ExxonMobil-led co-venture and the then APNO AFC coalition government had been heavily criticized for low royalties, 2%. Some countries are getting 15%, 17%, 20%. <laughs> Lack of ring-fencing provisions and cost oil claims that will see Guyana losing billions among other issues, and we saw recently 
something was barely 1.4 million dollars I think somewhere along that line Bismillah remember it is all in the raw and then the charge and then they came up some clerical error ladies and gentlemen by their by their representative and custom brokers some some shore base who were already caught bringing in items on a ship without declaring the items and they had to pay 20 million dollar fine and then they were they were charged for other kinds of fraudulent activities and then Exxon Mobil um, declared it and then our our powerful GRA commission and his back found out I mean billion or billions of dollars versus 1.4 or 1.3 million dollars for item supply ladies and gentlemen and everybody is putting the blame on some junior staff in the shore base company from Trinidad and Tobago can we imagine what that company and others like them had did to Trinidad why Trinidad is in the doldrums economically and uh, it faced with so much of infrastructural problems which was never done properly because of the, co the corruption in Trinidad and Tobago and these people are rushing into Guyana they are giving them opportunities and facilities they are running to the court and using our court system against us and they are still committing crimes after they were found committing crimes ladies and gentlemen that sure is company the controversial 2016 oil contract okay I finished with that piece sorry remember it's in the raw the current People's Progressive Party civic government has ruled out renegotiating that PSA pointing out that a country cannot risk losing Exxon's investments especially since the global petroleum market is uh, volatile when it comes to funds being injected into the sector well the PPC government does not want to renegotiate anymore because they probably felt threatened but I'm telling you what historically these international oil zinc copper companies from England and Europe once they are put under pressure they cause governments to be overthrown they cause um, disruption in politically uh, sometimes uh, leaders in countries and we see it in Africa were assassinated and tremendous corruption and confusion uh, orchestrated and I don't know but it, it is also a part of my opinion that being a poor country as we are and as weak as we are um, they had to be kind of a diplomatic and find a diplomatic way to stay quiet because you don't know what these uh, multinational corporations with so much wealth and power could do to offset the stability in Guyana and create mayhem my point of view this is not a political view expressed by the government or anyone else this is my personal point of view I'm not saying Exxon will do it though but I'm saying these these um, humongous companies we saw what the people what these corporations did in England it became um, stories for movies we see what the Europeans and, and so on and these people some of them in America have been involved in in gold running and, 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 and diamond smuggling and gold and so on now, all we see is action being taken against certain people in Guyana but not those those countries very funny very strange but I always say we as a people we must always try to do a thing in a legalistic manner back to the point instead the PPC administration has crafted a new PSA um, PS pub, uh, what about the um, production sharing agreement is PSA for future oil deals what is gone is gone Guyana stands to benefit from as high as 20 million signature bonus for the deep water blocks and US 10 million for the shallow water blocks so the new agreement indicates this additionally while it includes the retention of 50 50 profit sharing 
after cost recovery, there is an increase of the royalty from a mere 2% now to a 10% fixed rate. The imposition of a 10% rate, 10% corporate tax, and the lowering of the cost recovery to 65% from the previous 75% among other provisions. So the government of Guyana of Irfan Ali and the oil sector are mostly led by VP Jack Dale, who is kind of a genius in this field, came up with this idea. And these are some good news. So we have to thank them and applaud them. But what is gone is gone. And we don't want to create any political instability in our country. They have not said so. I, as a commentator, I'm saying so. And from my observation, my readings, my studies, I've seen this through.